There's seven strategies I use to launch my product on Amazon FBA and do over $2,700 in sales on day one. And this video is gonna contain every single technique, every single strategy you need to know if you're gonna be launching a product on Amazon. And I'm gonna teach you how to do this without PPC, without giveaways, without any kind of black hat techniques. The first technique I'm gonna teach you is how to use social media to help you launch a product on Amazon. And social media is extremely powerful if you use it right. And there's certain platforms that are much better than others to use when launching a product on Amazon. I'm gonna teach you which platforms to use and how to properly use them, including some secrets on how to get the most views possible for your post. The second strategy is to build an email list. This is, it blows my mind. I haven't heard any Amazon guru talking about this, but if you're gonna be selling a product on Amazon, one of the most powerful things you can do is build an email list of people that want to buy your product before you launch on Amazon. That way on day one, you can send out an email letting people know about your product. And I'm gonna teach you how to build an email list the right way. Another extremely powerful tool is a Facebook group. I've talked about this in a lot of other videos. I'm gonna go into much more depth in this video, but a Facebook group is probably one of those secret tools that I haven't heard anybody else talk about that has helped me more than anything else. It's a big reason why I was able to have so much success on day one of launching my product. And this may be the most important thing nobody's talking about, I'm gonna teach you how to build a Facebook group and how to properly leverage your Facebook group to help you launch a product on Amazon. After that, we're gonna talk about influencers. And right now, I know a lot of people don't wanna build their own social media, but social media is still a powerhouse. If you can reach out to influencers, get your product in their hands and have them promote your product on the day you launch, it's going to lead to more sales for you. And I'm gonna talk about how to reach out to influencers and how to work with influencers and how to maximize the chance that they're going to post your product on their social media feed. After that, I'm gonna talk about basic social marketing principles. And these are so important. So many people that sell on Amazon ignore basic principles of human psychology. I'm gonna tell you about six different principles of human psychology, six different things that actually trigger people to want to buy your product. And if you can leverage these properly, you're going to be successful on Amazon. You're gonna be successful when you launch your product. Number six is the buildup. Even if you get a list of people on email, even if you get a bunch of people on social media or Facebook, this principle of building up till your launch is gonna make so many more people buy from day one. Doing this one thing is gonna make so many more people excited about your product launch, make so many more people actually go to Amazon and buy your product and make it so when they get their product, they're much more likely to leave a positive review. I'm gonna talk in depth my strategy for building up to the launch that includes all the different emails I sent out, how I post in social media, how I post in my Facebook group to really get people excited and engaged in the launch. And finally, number seven, let's talk about the 80-20. And I'll talk about last, what are the top things if you could only do a few of these, what are the most important things to do? And I'll save that for last. Before I dive into each one of these secrets in depth, it's important to understand the core principles on how to rank a product in Amazon. And you have to keep something in mind. Amazon's job is to make as much money as possible. And at the end of the day, what Amazon really is, is a search engine. And so what you're trying to do is rank your product to the top of the search results. Someone might type in, for instance, for my product, they might type in keto nut butter. And I wanna to try to get my product to the top of the search results. The reason you wanna to go to the top of the search results is whoever's at the top is gonna to make the most money. It's gonna make the most amount of sales. And Amazon knows this. So what they wanna do is they wanna put the products at the top that are most likely to lead to sales. So here's a graph showing the amount of sales given the position on search ranking. And you can see it's almost an exponential curve. The number one position, whoever's number one in the search results is going to get the most sales followed by number two, number three, number four. And it's, it's not quite a winner's takes all situation, but the number one place makes way more sales than everybody else. And again, Amazon knows this. And there's really three factors that Amazon looks at when determining where to put your product in the search results. And the first one is click-through rate. So Amazon shows a bunch of different products and the click-through rate is what percentage of the time that Amazon shows your product does someone actually click on it. And so this is gonna be our first goal is we wanna make it as likely as possible that someone, when they see your search result, is gonna to wanna to click. And you really have three things that you can do 
to make this happen. One, you have to have a good main image. Two, you have to have a high quality title. And three is you need to get a lot of five star reviews because that's really all people are judging when they see your search results. That's all they can judge about your product. So you wanna make sure you have as high quality of those three things. The next factor that Amazon takes into consideration is the purchase rate. When someone actually clicks on your product listing, what percentage of the time do they actually purchase your product? And remember, this is the only way that Amazon's making money off your product is if someone actually purchases it. So let's just do a quick example here. If for instance, 10% of the time someone sees your product in the search results, they click on it, and 10% of the time they actually see, they get to your product page, they purchase it. That means just one out of 100 people that see your search result are actually going through and purchasing your product, aka actually making money for Amazon. Now let's say, let's say we could increase that. What if 50% of the time someone saw your search result, they clicked on it, and 50% of the time they saw your product page, they actually purchased it. That would mean that 25 out of 100 times that someone saw your search result, Amazon is actually making money, which would mean that Amazon would wanna put that closer and closer to the top because that's what's gonna get the most traffic and the most clicks. The other element of this that we haven't talked about yet is your product page. What you wanna do is you wanna make it as likely as possible that when someone actually clicks on your listing that they're going to buy your product. How do you do this? Well, I have other videos where I go in depth about this, but a quick refresher is the main image needs to be good, all the other images need to be super high quality, showing people the benefits of buying your product, you need to have a high quality title. You need to have a lot of five star reviews, a lot of high quality reviews. Your bullet points are also very important. One note on this is in the bullet points, you wanna talk about the benefits of your product. You don't wanna just talk about you know, the, the technical features of your product. Tell people, explain to people why they should buy your product and how it's gonna make them feel and how it's gonna benefit their life. There's also things like enhanced brand content, the description, the question and answer section. There's a bunch of different things here. I'll link another video talking in depth about how to increase your percentage chance that someone's actually going to buy your product. And then the third factor for ranking your product on the Amazon search results is sales velocity. Now, if Amazon sees that a product has had a thousand sales in the last five days, it's more likely to rank it high up on the search results as opposed to a product that's only had 100 sales in the last five days. Now, this is a much more advanced topic, but just keep this in the back of your head. You wanna get a burst of sales to your Amazon product, which is gonna lead to Amazon putting your product higher up in the search results, which is gonna lead into more sales and it's gonna lead into more reviews and that's gonna snowball into more and more success. And this is the whole point of a launch. You wanna get as many sales and as many reviews from day one as you possibly can. Now I've seen a lot of other videos talk about doing giveaways and I'm personally not a big fan of doing giveaways. And giveaways, for anyone that doesn't know, is where you give your product away for free or at a huge discount in exchange for a review. That's against Amazon's terms of service. People can get away with it. I have a lot of friends that have done this and, and been fine. I personally wouldn't touch it because I don't wanna take a chance of my Amazon account being banned. The other thing I've seen a lot of people talk about when they talk about how to launch a product and rank number one from day one is to use Amazon's PPC. And PPC means pay per click. It's a way for you to advertise your product, which basically you pay Amazon to get your product to the top of the search results and you pay every time someone clicks on your ad, hence the term pay per click. And the reason I personally don't recommend doing this from the beginning is because your product's not gonna have a lot of reviews, which means you're gonna be spending a lot of money on advertising, a lot of people are gonna be clicking on your product, and most people probably aren't gonna be buying. Let me ask you, when's the last time you went to Amazon and bought a product that had zero reviews? In this day and age, we like to buy products that have lots of five-star reviews. So what I'm gonna be talking about in depth in this video is how to get a lot of sales without PPC, without giveaways, without any black hat techniques, and also, how to make it so you're going to get a lot of organic, natural reviews. Then once you get the reviews, yes, do PPC. It's a great way to just up the amount of sales you're getting for your product. I think it's some of the best ROI you're going to get on Amazon or pretty much in internet marketing at all. And I'll do a future video going in depth about how to do PPC. So make sure to hit that subscribe button so you get that video. But in this video, I'm gonna go over all my techniques, all my secret strategies for launching a product. And these are things that I actually did. And the first thing is social media. In my opinion, old school private labeling is dead. The old way of selling on Amazon is dead. If you wanna sell on Amazon and have success right now, you need to one, create a brand around your product. Two, you need to create 
raving fans. You need to create a tribe around your product, people that love your product. And number three, you need to create a legitimate business. And I'm gonna talk about some strategies on how to actually do this, but the first one is social media. It's such a powerful tool and it, it kills me, but so many Amazon sellers never utilize this properly. If you're gonna be launching products on the internet, use social media and you're gonna have more success. It's pretty, pretty obvious, but obviously I don't want you to waste a lot of time. So for me personally, what I used was Instagram and I would post on Instagram, I'd get a, a decent amount of a following, get some kind of engagement, let them know that I'm gonna be coming out with this product soon. And there's a lot of different strategies on how to do this and a lot of times people say, oh, well, I don't even have my product yet. What should I post? Post things that people in your niche would be interested in. And again, for my product, I sell a healthy snack. And so what I would do is post, for instance, if I was starting over again and I didn't have my product, keto recipes, paleo recipes, uh, interviews with healthy influencers, just any kind of posts that are related to my topic, that things that people in my niche would like. But you don't need to use Instagram if you don't want to. If I were to do it over again, I probably would start a YouTube channel for my brand, really trying to let people know what the brand's all about, really trying to grow an audience. But the ultimate goal is to have your audience share their email with you. And I'll, I'll talk in depth about how to do this. But YouTube, Instagram are two of my favorite platforms. You can also try out Facebook. I'm gonna be talking about Facebook groups also later in this video. There's also platforms like LinkedIn or even meetup.com. There's like so many different random platforms out there to, to engage in social media. TikTok's another big one. That's an up and coming one. But like I said, the ultimate goal is to get people on an email list. The way I did this is in my Instagram bio, I told people that you can click on the link if you want a chance to win a free sample of my product. And once you get people on your email list, this is an extremely powerful tool that not enough people are talking about. And an email list is great for launching any kind of products, but I think it works especially well for an Amazon product. And one thing to do, one secret that I haven't heard anybody else talk about, once you get someone to sign up for your email list, send them a personal email. The goal of getting someone's email is not to just have them on some big list somewhere. The goal is to make personal connections. So what I'd recommend doing, as soon as someone signs up for your email list, send them a personal email, enter a dialogue with them. Now there are ways to automate this personal email and, and still make it look like it is a personal email. That's something, that's a tactic I share in, in my course that I don't wanna talk about too publicly because it's, it's one of those awesome little techniques. But if you don't know how to do that, you can always do it manually. You can send, every time you see someone new sign up for your email list, go into Gmail, write them out an email, and just say, hey, introduce yourself. And the way I did it was I'd ask people, hey, thanks so much for joining the email list. What do you do for fun? And they'd respond with whatever they do for fun. And I'd talk about how we maybe have commonalities or I'd ask the questions about their interest. But this email list is gonna be very important for a point, a strategy that we're gonna talk about later, which is the buildup. And the buildup, if you watch any part of this video, please make sure you stick around till that. It is so important. This is something, a big mistake I see a lot of new sellers making a lot of new internet marketers don't properly utilize the buildup and it's one of the most powerful techniques. But technique number three and one of my personal favorite techniques is a Facebook group. So it starts with social media, you get their email from there, you create some kind of a connection, but then the next goal is to get people into a Facebook group. And this is so powerful. I've talked about this in depth in other videos, but I'm still gonna share some new insights into how a Facebook group works and why it's so important. But one of the reasons why 99% of the people that fail on Amazon fail is they don't properly utilize this step that I'm gonna tell you. And it's testing your product out, validating it, and making it better. So the point of the Facebook group is to get some kind of an interaction with people that are your potential customers. This allows you to test out the idea of your product. You tell them, hey, this is what I'm thinking about selling. What do you think? Is that something you would buy? And then what they're gonna do is they're gonna say, yeah, maybe, but maybe you should change it in this way. They're gonna give you new insights and they're gonna help you create a better product. Now, the way I've done this with my product is I'd show people different logos and I'd have them vote on which logo was their favorite logo. I'd also show them things like my package design. Now, my initial package design for my product was gonna be purely black and white. Then someone in the Facebook group said, hey, that looks really bad. You should try adding color. They, they basically said the black and white image doesn't look like it's food. So I took their advice and I added color to it. And at first, to be honest with you, I disagreed with them, but enough people in the Facebook group said, yeah, it would look better with color that I'm like, okay, obviously they know something I don't. 
And that's one of the reasons why I see so many people fail on Amazon is they think they're smarter than their customer. I'm gonna tell you right now, like sure, you should be the leader of your company, but you should also listen to your customers. Now that's one part of what makes the Facebook group so powerful. But the other thing is so much more interesting and so much more genius about it is what you're doing is you're taking people on the journey of creating your product. In fact, you're getting your potential customers to help you to create the perfect product for them. And what they're doing is they're buying in. They're super interested in this entire process. And so all along, you know, months before you launch your product, they're helping you create this product and they know about it and they're getting excited about it. The other thing that's really cool about a Facebook group is it's not just a one-to-one -one conversation. With an email list, it's kind of like some overlord talking down to all the peasants because with an email list, you send out an email newsletter blast and nobody ever replies to those. With a Facebook group, it's like everyone's on the same playing field. And so I might post something and then people will comment on it and other people will comment on their comments. It allows everybody to engage in a group discussion. And also, I don't have to be the only one commenting. I saw that sometimes people, that uh, just random people in my Facebook group would post something and then someone else would comment on that post and it would just, it would snowball all this excitement. And this is such a powerful tool. Please, if you're gonna be launching a product on Amazon, start a Facebook group. It's gonna help you create a better product and it's gonna help you to launch your product. Now I know some people absolutely hate social media and they don't, they don't wanna start a social media account. They don't even wanna deal with Facebook or any of this stuff. Another option for you, and this is another thing that I did, is you can always work with influencers. Influencers are people on Instagram, on YouTube, on Facebook that have a large following already. And what you can do is send them a free product in exchange for a post. And for the launch of my last product, I sent out 85 boxes of my product to 85 different influencers. And first off, thank you to my girlfriend and my family for helping me pack those boxes. But there's a few things I wanna explain if you're gonna work with influencers. First is a lot of people get tripped up with how do you contact these influencers? And there's a few different ways. A lot of times on YouTube or on Instagram, they'll have their email. Send them an email and, and let them know that you wanna send them a free product in exchange for a post. Now it's very important that you make it very clear that you're sending them a free product in exchange for a post. Don't, don't make that, uh, make that very obvious because if it's not, spelled out, there's a chance they might just say, hey, thanks for the product and run away and steal your product. So tell them, I'm gonna send you a free product for in exchange for a post. Another thing to keep in mind is on Instagram, sometimes they don't have their email available. You can always send them a direct message. Now, this strategy will work for influencers that have a smaller audience, but as influencers get bigger and bigger audiences, they're harder and harder to reach. And this is where one of the strategies I used comes in handy. And it's what I call spotlight marketing. Instead of sending an email to an influencer saying, hey, I wanna send you a free product in exchange for a post, send them an email saying, I want to do an interview with you. Now the interview can take place in written form. You can just email back and forth. You can get them on a phone call, do, uh, do an interview and actually like type it out as a blog. Or my favorite way to do this is create a podcast around your product and I did this with the sole intention of trying to connect with influencers. Now this strategy has a bonus that if you create a podcast for your product, you're gonna get listeners to the podcast, you're gonna grow a following so that when you do go to launch your product, you're gonna have a few hundred people that listen to your podcast that wanna go buy your product. But you don't necessarily need to get a ton of followers for a podcast to be successful. The reason I think it's so powerful is it allows you to connect with high level influencers and imagine, when, when you're sending emails to influencers, you have to think to yourself, what is it that they want? And I'm gonna tell you right now, all influencers want to spread their message. They want to, to grow their audience. And if you can help them do this by having them on your podcast, which hopefully has some kind of an audience, then you can have a lot of success. Now, a thing to note is your podcast doesn't have to have a huge audience. Most people that I ask for an interview never ask me, hey, how big's your audience? I was able to get some super high level influencers on my podcast with a simple email. And this strategy works extremely well, but keep in mind, the goal of the podcast isn't just to use the people. The goal of the podcast is for you to have an hour to spend talking about how great this person is, an hour to build a deep relationship with this influencer. Then at the end of the podcast, you can mention to them, hey, I'd like to send you a free product, is that okay? And I'm gonna tell you right now, every single influence, every single person loves free stuff, especially after you've just spent an hour talking about how great they are, 
and, and then you offer to give them something for free, the likelihood that they're gonna say yes is gonna be way higher. Then if they receive the product and they like it, the chance that they're gonna post about it is also gonna be extremely high. Now I am gonna talk about what I think is the most important principle of this entire launch strategy, which is the buildup in just a minute. But before I get into that, let's talk about the psychology of these internet marketing principles, the psychology of how to actually make someone buy your product and support your product. And there's a book called Influence by Robert Cialdini, which I highly recommend reading. And he points out that there's six principles to influence, six principles to persuading someone to do basically anything in life. And if you can master these principles, you're gonna have success with your launch. And one thing to note is, please use these principles for good. If you have a good product and you use these principles, you're going to have success. If your product isn't good and you're trying to just scam people, well, in the long term, it's gonna to come to bite you because the way the internet works nowadays is, you know, you might have, you might be able to get sales on the short run, but in the long run, if you if you use these principles and sell crappy products, it's eventually gonna come back to bite you. And the first principle is reciprocity. And reciprocity is this idea: if someone gives something to you, you feel this desire to do something nice for them. Now, how you use this in your launch is up to you. One way I did this is by giving out free samples of my product. I gave out free samples for a number of different reasons. One was to actually honestly get feedback, but the second one is I wanted to build and reward my super fans. And the third kind of selfish reason was I assumed if I gave someone a sample of something and they liked it, on the day that I launched my product, they were going to buy it. Now, how you use this principle is up to you, but the second principle and something so many Amazon sellers completely forget about is scarcity. The way that I use this on my launch is for the first week only, I discounted my price from $27.99 down to $19.99. And scarcity is this idea that something is gonna be gone, it's scarce. Another thing you can do, and I would not recommend lying about this, but you can say, hey, there's only 400 boxes of my product left, 400 units of my product left, whatever it is, and only use this if it's actually true. For instance, for my launch, this just happened to be true, I sent in a certain amount of units into Amazon and not all of them were showing up, only about 400 were showing up. And so I told people, hey, there's only 400 units available, so you might wanna hurry up and buy. And this lets people know, you know what, um, not only do I have a week only to get this discount, but once these units are gone, this deal is gone forever. So it helps to motivate people because they know that they need to act now. Number three is authority. And I didn't use this very well in, in my launch campaign, but an example of this would be if you see a doctor saying, you know, four out of five doctors recommend this product, that's authority. That person we look up to. One way you can use this is by getting influencers. I guess I did kind of use it. You can get influencers to talk about your product and people are like, wow, if that person that I consider to be an authority on the ketogenic diet is recommending this product, I should probably go buy it. You can figure out ways that you can use authority, but I think influencers is a very powerful one. Number four is consistency. And this is one of the reasons why you wanna get people involved in your product launch group. You wanna get people involved in your social media because if people feel like they've been consistently helping you out, then when it comes time for your launch, they're much more likely to go actually hit the purchase button. People like to feel like they're a, they, they like to stay in consistency. If you think that you're a good person, you're gonna do good things in life because that's who you think you are. So what you wanna do is help people realize that they are your customer, that they're one of your fans, and then if they develop that relationship with you and your product, they're going to buy your product when it launches. Number five is liking. We buy products from people that we know, like, and trust. So my big question to you is how do you get people to know you? Well, obviously social media, but the liking part's very important. And again, this is why I recommend sharing your journey, sharing every all the ups and downs. People like other people that are familiar. People like to buy products from other people. And what you wanna do is you wanna keep showing up on their social media feed. You wanna keep showing up, letting them know, hey, I'm really working hard on this product. Uh, you know, Maybe things aren't always going well, but showing them the behind the scenes. And the way I did this for my launch was constantly posting, constantly showing updates, and constantly asking for feedback. And number six is consensus. Humans are social animals. If we see that everybody is buying Apple products, we're more likely to buy Apple products. If everybody's buying Nike products, we're more likely to buy Nike. And we just kind of have developed through evolution knowing that, all right, if the entire tribe is doing something, it's probably safe. You did not, back 10,000 years ago, back in caveman days, you did not want to be the first one that tried this new berry that you just found. You wanted to know that the whole tribe has a consensus that it's safe. So you need to do this same thing with your launch. But this 
finally leads me to number six, which is the buildup. And this is the most important principle that so many, and I feel like I've said that a lot of times, but this really is probably one of the most important principles that so many people ignore when launching a product on Amazon. You wanna treat the launch of your product like Apple treats the launch of one of their products. They don't just say, hey everybody, um, it's available, go to your local Apple store and buy it right now. No, they release the product months before it's gonna come out. Then they leak out some details. They, they might share the product with some influencers, some tech reviewers. They kind of have this buildup process. So by the time that it by the time the product finally launches, there's people waiting days in line. They're camping outside the Apple store to buy the latest iPhone. You want to treat the launch of your product as much like this as possible. Another example of this is movie theaters and movies. When a movie is gonna come out, they don't just say, oh, by the way, um, everyone, the movie's out. They do the trailers months, if not years sometimes before the movie comes out. Then as it gets closer, they start having the stars of the movie go on late night talk shows. And what you're trying to do here is you're trying to build up the anticipation, the excitement. And again, what you're using is the principle of scarcity because the ultimate form of scarcity is a product not even being available yet. People want what they can't have. As humans, we want that thing that we can't have. And the cool thing about this is when your product finally does become available, those are gonna be the people that are first in line to buy your product. That's why when Apple releases a new iPhone, people are willing to wait three days in line, even though if they wanted to, the next day or two, they could just go to the store and not have to wait in line at all and buy it. It's because they wanna be the first one. They, they can't wait. And it's kinda, of, if you remember the days back when you were a kid, Christmas morning, that feeling of so much excitement, you wanna to try to, instill that in your customers. And this build-up process is a great way to do it. So what I'd recommend doing is months before you launch your product, start hinting at it, start getting feedback, start growing rapport with people in your community. Then maybe one month before you launch your product, tell everybody, hey, it's, it's one month away, product launch is gonna be on this date, and then send out an email newsletter, send out posts on social media. I highly recommend doing video posts as well. Uh, some other things, you could post stories. You could send out personal emails. You could send out personal Facebook messages or DMs. You might wanna save those for later, but just get the word out that in one month you're gonna launch your product. Then you're gonna do the same thing three weeks before, two weeks before. And a lot, during this time, you can give updates, letting people know, hey, here's some different things. You could ask questions. You could say, here's what my Amazon page looks like. What do you think? Then one week before you're about to launch your product, this is when you turn up the heat and you really start letting people know it's one week away, really start like shaking the cage. Then again, five days before, three days before, the day before, I want you to send out those emails. I want you to uh, post in social media, post in your Facebook group, post anywhere and everywhere you can. And then finally, on the day your product launches, this is when you open the floodgate. Do everything I've already talked about, send the emails out, do all that kind of stuff, but add to that, personal messages on Facebook, direct messages on Instagram, sending out personal emails to anyone and everyone that you think actually would buy your product. Obviously, you don't need to message that person from high school that you haven't talked to in 15 years that is probably not gonna buy your product. Don't waste your time with that. You know, but anyone you think that is likely to buy your product, message them. And as I mentioned, post on stories, do anything and everything you can. Then the day that you launch, a few hours later, five, six hours later, let everybody know via email at least maybe even social media as well, how your product's doing. Let them know that, oh my God, already 50 people have bought, thank you guys so much. And what this is doing is letting people know, it's, it's building social proof for your product. It's letting people know it's safe. You can eat the berry. Basically, you're letting people know that other people are also buying my product. By the way, there's only a limited number of units available. And so it's creating some urgency, but it's also creating that social proof. Letting Letting that person know that's like, oh, I don't know if I wanna buy it or not. Well, 50 other people have already done it. Okay, I guess I can buy this product. From there, a few days later, you can send out another email, do some more social media posts. And then the day before, let everyone know, hey, there's only one more day before the sale ends. And then on the day the sale ends, I'd also send out two emails and do you know two social media posts or so on all your different platforms. And this is just letting everybody know it ends today. This is absolutely your last chance. And what you'll find is, uh, the most people buy on the beginning and the end. In the middle, not as many people buy. Now, from here, let's talk about the 80-20. Obviously, I talked about a bunch of different things, and the 80-20 principle for anyone that doesn't know is 
what is the 20% of the things that I've talked about that will lead to 80% of the results? Because obviously when I launch a product on Amazon, I try everything out. The reason I do that is because my goal is to teach you, my goal is to learn as much as possible and teach you what actually works and what doesn't work as well. And I will say, if I had to come up with just a few things to do, I would say 100% build an email list. How you build the email list, I don't care. I think social media is the easiest way to do it, but that's up to you. Then 100% start a Facebook group. And the third thing I would do is the buildup. The buildup is so easy to do, it costs nothing. And I've had so many people tell me out of the blue, oh, by the way, I just launched a Kickstarter, or oh, by the way, my book is just out on Amazon whatever. And I'm like, I don't care. Like, I'm not going to go buy it. But if they would have started months beforehand, letting me know that I'm working on, I'm working on this book. Hey, by the way, asking me questions, what do you think of the cover? And, and, and they had me follow them on this journey. The day that they launched their book or the day they launched their Kickstarter or their product on Amazon, I'd be excited for them. I would go buy it and I would go support them. You want to do the same thing. You want to get people involved in your story, involved in your journey. So yes, those three things are the 80, 20. But one idea I want to share with you is sometimes it's not about the 80, 20. I thought when I first quit my corporate job seven years ago, I read the four hour work week and it, it talks all about, you know, how you can work four hours a week and make a bunch of money. And I thought the 80, 20 principle was going to be the answer to all my problems. But I only need to work four hours a week. What they don't tell you is if you want to find one good idea, you need to try five different things out and four of them are going to suck, but one of the ideas is going to be good. And if you want to try to find one great idea, you need to find five good ideas and four of them, four of the ideas are going to be good and one of them will be great. And so what that means is to find one great idea, you need to try out 25 different things. And so that's another principle. If you're going to be launching a product on Amazon, treat this seriously. This could be like your golden ticket. And I know for me, when I launched my product on Amazon, within two months of launching my product on Amazon, I was doing over six figures passive income. And it was basically, it was $10,000 passive income per month, which led to six figures a year. And so if you do this right, and if you take this seriously, this could be your, I don't want to say your ticket to freedom, but like it's a, if you create a legitimate business and put a lot of energy into it up front, you can have a lot of success. So it's worth trying out every single thing you can think that might give you a better chance of getting more sales, getting more reviews. And I recently launched a product on Amazon and on the first day I did over $2,700 in sales. And I talk about that in depth in this video. I share exactly how I did it as well as all the mistakes I made. And I'm going to be honest, I made a lot of mistakes. So click on that video, learn from my mistakes and remember to enjoy the journey. Thanks for watching.